What's going on everybody? Josh here with Scrapyard Films and today I got another Vegas Pro tutorial for you. And in this one I'm going to show you how to get the perfect chroma key on a green screen, everything from setup to editing. So to start this off, you're going to need some bare minimum equipment and that equipment is lights a green screen, and a camera. Now it's recommended to have a pretty decent DSLR, but you can do this with higher end Android and iPhones. You're also gonna need some OFX editing software like Vegas Pro or DaVinci Resolve. The Chroma Key or Pro plugin from New Blue. Don't worry, it is free, and I'll go ahead and tell you how to download it in the description below. And optionally for cleanup, if you want grade color curves plugin, that one actually costs a little bit of money, but it is fantastic for this perfect cleanup. So let's start with the setup. The first thing you want to do is film in the biggest room you can. Here's where I do all my green screening at my corporate office for work. Your ultimate goal is to be as far away from your green screen as possible and control the light source as much as possible. So go ahead, plop up that green screen on the wall. Make sure it has little to no wrinkles because you need it as flat as possible. Now set up at least two lights pointing at the green screen to the left and right. You'll want to position them in a way to where they're evenly lighting the green screen because if they're too close, they're going to create hot spots and that makes it much harder to key. So back them up a little bit and make sure your light is spread out evenly across the green screen. For me, I personally use four lights, two for the top and two for the bottom on the left and right, and it lights up the green perfectly. Next, you're going to want to stand at least six feet away from the green screen. The closer you are to the green screen, you actually get bleed over from the light bouncing off the green and hitting you. So the green kind of wraps around your body a little bit and it makes it a little bit harder to key. So stand as far away as you can from the green screen while still being in frame. Six feet is a good number to go for, but I usually stand about eight to 10 feet away. Next, use a bright key light for your subject. If you only have one light, make sure it's positioned right in front of you and out of the frame of the shot, but at least lighting you up. If you can, use a second light because that'll really help. Now for recording. You want to record in the highest resolution possible. Typically that's 4K. If you have something that goes higher than that, awesome, but you want to aim for 4K. You can do 1080p, but comparing 1080p to 4K side by side, you're going to see noticeable quality differences. The higher the quality means the more pixels in your frame and the easier it is to get a cleaner key. Next, record in a high bit rate. The higher the bit rate, the sharper the image is. The lower the bit rate, the more blocky it gets. So stick with the highest bit rate you can. Now it may seem obvious, but make sure your subject is in focus. Sometimes you just start recording and you're maybe just slightly out of focus. And what that does is that blurs around you and it makes it for a harder key. Make sure your subject is in focus so you can have a pristine outline of the body that separates them from the background. Next is kind of optional, but you want to record in the highest frame rate possible. Recording in 60 frames per second means less motion blur. Recording in 24 frames a second, which is more cinematic, but you'll get some motion blur kind of like this. It's a little bit harder to key motion blur out, so it's recommended to do higher frame rate stuff and then add motion blur in afterwards when you're all done keying. Next, if you're using a DSLR, make sure your aperture is set a little bit high. Sometimes low aperture stuff means a real blurry background. Like this lens is a 1.2 aperture, so if I'm focused in on me, the background's pretty blurry. So I raise this to about three or four, something like that, because most lenses are sharper in the middle of their aperture range. So anywhere from four to eight, you'll get an extremely sharp shot, but it is gonna darken it up. So you kinda have to find a balance there. Next, if your camera can support it, record in 10-bit and or 422 chroma subsampling. 10-bit allows for the most control over your color range, and 422 chroma subsampling allows for sharper and more defined colors separated from other colors. Most newer DSLRs have the option to record like this, but newer Android or iPhones have the option to record in 10-bit most of the time. So check and see if your phone can record in 10-bit, and if it does, then you're good to go and you should have an easier time keying. Now let's jump into the editing. I'm gonna be using Vegas Pro 18, which is my favorite OFX video editor, but you can use whatever else you wanna use. The reason I'm clarifying OFX is because Chroma Key or Pro is an OFX plugin and works with HitFilm, DaVinci Resolve, and Vegas Pro. All right, so we're inside Vegas Pro 18. So I have some corrected footage of me in front of a green screen. Underneath this, I just have a general color gradient, just so we can see our results pretty broadcasted to us. And I'm gonna show you all the details of Chroma Key or Pro. And then after that, I'm gonna show you a specific scenario where you can use gray color curves to help do stuff with motion blur. So to start it off, drag Chroma Key or Pro's default onto your clip, and it loads up the options here. We have Chroma Key options, 
garbage matte options, which is basically masking inside this plugin. Outline options if you want to make an outline of the subject that you have not keyed out. And drop shadow options if you want to make a drop shadow out of the subject that you have not keyed out. So we're going to open the chroma key tree, and we have some pretty simple options here. First, we're going to choose the color, select little eyedropper tool, and then just choose somewhere near your head. From here, we have color range. This goes from 0 to 100. Basically, the further to the right this is, the more it's going to take away from green that's spilled over and reflected in your scene. You never want to have this too high. It might take away from parts of your subject that aren't even green, like this blue mask right here is getting some taken away. So I like to keep this right around the 75 mark. It's probably my sweet spot. Sensitivity is the strength of how much color it's going to take away from the range you've selected. So if you drag this up, you're going to see it start taking away. But if you drag it way too high, it's going to take away more than it should. So for strength, I typically like to keep this anywhere from 30, maybe 30 to 50. It's your call and it all depends on your scene. So for this one specifically, I want to make sure it's not taking away more than it should right here around my neck. All right, 40 looks pretty good to me. Now I broke the cardinal rule and I have green on my mask right here, so that's going to be keyed out and there's nothing I can do about that. Over here for smooth key, this basically smooths out the edge of the subject that's being keyed. Let's zoom in and show you. So right here on the neck, right now smooth key by default is on 100, but if we take it away, you can see it really jaggeds up the edges and it makes it pretty pixelated. So I like to keep smooth key anywhere from 50 to 100. It all depends on what you want your scene to look like. So I'm going to keep mine at 100. And now we go down to erase spill. Sometimes it's unavoidable and green spills over onto your subject. Erase spill desaturates the green and turns it gray. So it makes it kind of look like shadows. So let's find a spot real quick. So we see right here around my arm, we have a little bit of green spill. If we go to Chroma Key or Pro and start increasing Erase Spill, you'll see that that green turns to gray. Erase Spill is fantastic. Feather is exactly what it is. It's going to feather the edges and shrink your image. So you don't want this one too high because it'll start looking a little too weird. So for feathering, I like to keep that anywhere from 0.5 to 1.5. And Shrink does what Feather does. It shrinks in your image, but it doesn't smooth out the edges or round it off or blur it. It just harshly shrinks your image. So typically I keep shrink at zero. Let's see what this looks like. That's looking pretty good. We zoom in and it looks like we have some of the eyes. We could see that right here, so we need to adjust that. We could turn the sensitivity down. And there we go, looks like 20 looks pretty good. And I'd say it looks like a pretty good key. Now let's go on to the motion blur problem. So this footage was shot in 24 frames per second at a 180 degree shutter angle. So that means I got some motion blur in my hands and we can clearly see that. Now when you have a race spill at 100, it's going to turn the green into a gray or dull gray. It desaturates a lot of the green that's within your range. So I'm going to zoom into the hand here. And we see that our hand has a little bit of green and a lot of gray around here. Kind of looks a little bad if you ask me. So the best thing you could do to avoid this is have no motion blur on your green screen at all. So that means shoot in either 24 or 60 frames per second. But make sure your shutter angle is probably about 50 or less. Or if you're using shutter speed, make sure it's four times whatever your frame rate is. So if you have 24 frames per second, make sure your shutter speed is above 90. If you're shooting in 60 frames per second, make sure your shutter speed is above 240. This creates absolutely no motion blur and it negates this whole problem right here. But if you have this issue and you want to get rid of it and you don't want it to look gray, you can use gray color curves. So for Chroma Key or Pro, I'm going to bring down a race spill so it brings back the green in my hand. And I'm going to take gray color curves. You're going to choose the default and drag that onto your clip. From here, we're going to go to the SHY menu and we're going to disable everything except for hue. What we're going to do is select the eyedropper, and we're going to select the green right in between the fingertips. And then we're also going to take the eyedropper and then select the skin tone color, which is roughly right about here. Next, make a point at the very end by double clicking on the line. Select all of them and make them linear. Take your green point and then drag that down. And if you do, it's going to convert your green to the same color as your hand. You want to try to match up this line perfectly or what your skin tone is lined up as. And if you do that, we zoom out, we now have just regular motion blur that looks the same color as your hand, so it looks a lot better than a weird gray. This also helps because remember, we have erase spill completely off if we zoom into the edge of your skin. This method also erases the spill, but better. So it makes for an even more perfect key. But if you followed all of these steps, then you're well on your way to doing perfect chroma keying. And there you have it. You now know everything I know about chroma keying on a green screen or even a blue screen this can work with. 
Now, this is going to be a little bit different for everybody because not everyone has a big open space to work with. Some people are on a much tighter scale. But if you remember, you just got to stay as far away from the green screen as possible, shooting the highest, crispest resolution you possibly can, and then you should have a decent time keying out your subject. If this video helped you out, be sure to shoot a like and subscribe down there because that'll really help me out. I'll see you guys in the next video. And I want to give a special shout out to all of my super subscribers up there at the top. Be sure to check out their channels for some awesome content.